A 10 centimeter long thin glass rod uniformly charged to 10 nanocoulombs and a 10 centimeter long thin plastic rod uniformly charged to negative 10 nanocoulombs are placed side by side 4 centimeters apart. What are the electric field strengths E1, E2, and E3 at distances 1 centimeter, 2 centimeters, and 3 centimeters from the glass rod along the line connecting the midpoints of the two rods? So here we have our glass rod. It's 10 centimeters long and 10 nanocoulombs charged. And our plastic rod, which is also 10 centimeters long, negative 10 nan nanocoulombs charged. And both of these two rods are 4 centimeters apart. And then we have E1, which is 1 centimeter from the glass rod, 3 from the plastic. E2, which is equally spaced, 2 centimeters between the two and then E3, which is 3 centimeters from the glass rod and 1 centimeter from the plastic rod. First we're going to draw the electric fields between the two rods and through the points E1, E2, and E3. So first we have our glass rod, which we'll just label G, and we have our plastic rod, P, and since the glass rod is positive, the electric field is going to go away from it. Something like that. And the plastic rod is negative, so the field is going to point towards the rod. Like this. The electric field on the point E1 will look something like this, where the electric field from the plastic rod is going to be pulling harder than the electric field from the glass rod. The electric field on point 2 will look something like this, where E um, of the plastic rod is going to pull at the same force as E of the uh, glass rod. And then for the electric field on E3, the force from the electric field of the plastic rod is going to pull less than the electric field from the glass rod. Next we're going to calculate electric field from the glass rod and the electric field from the plastic rod on for each point E1, E2, and E3. And to do so we are going to use the equation E equals K absolute value of Q divided by distance times the square root of distance squared plus length over 2 squared. So the electric field of the glass rod on 1 is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th, which is the k constant, times the absolute value of the charge of the glass rod, which is going to be 10 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs, divided by the distance, which is 0 0.01 meters, times the square root of that distance squared plus the length, which is 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters, divided by 2 squared. And this should give you 176,504.5 newtons. The electric field of the plastic rod on 1 is going to be very similar, except this time we will be using the charge of the plastic rod, which is negative, which isn't going to matter anyway since it's in absolute value bars. And we're going to use a distance of 3 centimeters, or 0 0.03 meters, instead of the 0 0.01.
everything else is the same. And this should give us 51,449.6 newtons. The electric field of the glass rod on two, again we're going to use K times the absolute value of the charge. This time the distance is 0 0.02 meters. And this should give us 83,562.9 newtons. The electric field of the plastic rod on two is actually exactly the same as the glass rod because the, char the charge is different but it's an absolute value bar so that doesn't matter and the distance is exactly the same. So we should get the same answer of 83,562.9 newtons. The electric field of the glass rod on three is going to be equal to the K constant times the charge again divided by the distance times the square root of that distance squared plus the length over 2 squared and as you can see this actually looks very familiar it is exactly the same as our calculation for the plastic rod on 1 so our answer should be 51,449.6 newtons Likewise, for the electric field of the plastic rod on three, our answer is going to look just like our answer for the electric field of the glass rod on one. which is 176,504.5 newtons. Next we're going to find our net for E1, E2, and E3 by adding our EGs and EPs. So first we have E1. We're going to add our E 1G plus E1P, which is 1. done correctly, you should get 2.3 times 10 to the fifth newtons. As our E2 is just E2G plus E2P. And this time, since they are both the same, we'll just multiply by 2. And that will give us 1.67 times 10 to the fifth newtons. Finally, our E3, again, We'll just add our E3G and our E3P, which since they were the same numbers as our electric field on one, we should have the same answer, which is 2.3 times 10 to the fifth newtons. So the strength of the electric field on one is going to be 2.3 times 10 to the fifth newtons. The strength of the electric field on two is 1.6 times 10 to the fifth newtons. 
and the strength of the electric field on E3 is 2.3 times 10 to the fifth newtons.